Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 3. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Insanity walkthrough. Over the course of the last three episodes, we completed the Omega DLC, and in the last video, we successfully liberated Omega from Cerberus occupation and gave it back to Arya. In the background here, you can see a small gift she left us, the chessboard of Cerberus General Petrovsky, but we don't want to spend too much time reminiscing about past adventures. After all, we have quite a few more things still left to do before we can call this playthrough complete. Now, before we embark on today's mission, we can visit a few people around the Normandy, although most of them don't have anything new to say to us. Does Dr. Tassoni ever let you in her room? Because she keeps me out. And well, after deciding in favor of pursuing a romance with Tali, Liara has not exactly been on the best terms with us either. Do you ever feel awkward being the only Turian on the ship? I don't know. Should I? I just mean not having anyone else like you around. Mm, doesn't seem to bother Liara. But she can eat their food. Now, a bit of banter between Tali and Garrus, but the more interesting thing at this moment is that both of our engineers are suspiciously absent, so let's head downstairs, perhaps we can find them there. Oh, hello, Commander. We were just uh, double-checking the thermal ducts. I'm sure you were. Carry on. Alright, looks like Daniels and Donnelly have finally moved beyond just being friends, and honestly, who can blame them? Do you think Shepard noticed? I'm sure he didn't. I'm so embarrassed. So, with that behind us, we can now leave engineering and head down to the shuttle bay, where we will not only be able to talk to James, but can also take care of our very first weapon upgrades. So far, we have only modified our guns with various attachments, but using this console over here, we can actually improve the weapons themselves in terms of damage, ammo capacity and weight. As you can see, every single gun we have picked up or purchased is listed here, and we have the ability to pay a small price to upgrade each one to level 2. And the more powerful or rare the weapon is, the more expensive that upgrade becomes. Higher tiers also cost more credits, so this can very quickly become an absolute money sink. For now, we want to focus on the Graal Spike Thrower, a shotgun variant that we picked up on Tuchanka, and we want to take it from its current level 1 straight to level 5. Level 5 is the cap for the first playthrough, by the way. You can get up to level 10 with a New Game Plus save file, but that would require playing through the entire game twice, and we're not going to do that. This sadly also means that the Gunsmith achievement for upgrading a weapon to level 10 will not be unlocked in this series, but I think we can live with that. In any case, taking the Graal Spike Thrower to level 5 already cost us about 27,000 credits, so you can imagine how expensive upgrading the full list would be. 300 years it took to take back the quarry and homeworld. I sure as hell hope it doesn't take that long for us. I'm ready to see Earth again, Shepard. And so are we, but before we get to that, we have another mission to complete. After the events of the Omega DLC, the Normandy is still located in the Widow System, home of the Citadel, and while pretty much every mission we can start at this point begins here, there is one that takes place in the Nimbus Cluster, and that's where we're going. Now, a bit of planet scanning to get us started, although this won't take long. The most important point of interest is in the Aga U system, and coincidentally, it is also the only one in here. I found something. Scanning the planet Carcosa, we can find ruins of an ancient civilization dating back more than 2.7 million years, although it looks like whoever lived here eventually polluted their planet to the point of becoming uninhabitable. We meanwhile recover the Library of Ashar, a collection of ancient Asari texts, and we also already met someone on the Citadel who should be very interested in these. That means we can now travel to Kalini. According to our journal, this is actually the system where our mission will take place, but as you saw, that is not the case. Signal confirmed. Instead, we can recover some fuel and then head over to Messana, where a distress signal has been sent out from an Asari colony. The planet's description also reveals that this might not be the most favorable place to live among the Asari, and that further information about it is unusually hard to come by. So we are going in more or less blind here. Let's see what awaits us. 
For our squad, we are going with Garrus and Leara. The latter absolutely needs to come in my opinion, and Garrus also has a few unique lines of dialogue throughout the mission. For our weapon then, we are of course taking the recently upgraded Graal Spike Thrower shotgun, and we will further modify it with a high caliber barrel for extra damage and a spare thermal clip for extra ammo capacity. The loadouts of Liara and Garrus meanwhile won't change and neither will any of Shepard's abilities, while Garrus has a few points to spend that we want to use on upgrading his concussive shot. We're only taking that to level 3 however, his maxed out overload is far more useful and all abilities share a cooldown, including Proximity Mine, which should not be mistaken for one of the grenade powers of other squad members. This ability allows Garrus to place a mine near an enemy and once a hostile creature gets too close it explodes, pretty simple and straightforward. Personally I've had mixed results with this, but when it is triggered it can deal a good amount of damage in a large radius. And with the level 5 evolution we can also ensure that all affected targets take bonus damage from all sources for 8 seconds afterwards. Still, even with the recharge speed upgrade at rank 6, Garrus won't be able to use this too often, but we might be able to throw it in here and there if overload is not applicable. Moving on then, we can now spend all of Liara's remaining points, first to max out warp with the pierce evolution, simply because the recharge speed is already pretty fast and a further reduction by 0.8 seconds likely won't make as much of a difference. Leaving warp ammo at rank 3, stasis can then also be taken to level 6 by choosing to upgrade duration at rank 4 and by selecting the bonus power at rank 5. This gives Liara a 30% chance of stasis not causing a cooldown when it's used, so effectively, with every third cast, she will be able to use another ability immediately afterwards. Finally then, we are going for the stasis bubble, allowing the ability to trap multiple creatures at once, and in some of the later fights of the game that could be very useful. And with that, we are ready, so let's head planet side and find out more about this mysterious Asari colony. Dig up any information on the mission, Liara? I did. And I now understand why High Command wanted to hide it. We're headed to an Ardat Yakshi monastery. Ardat Yakshi? Like Morinth? Morinth chose to be a killer. These Ardat Yakshi isolated themselves to avoid that. But it doesn't mean they're harmless. Their urge to feed can be powerful. That's why High Command sent in commandos to investigate the monastery's distress signal. So what does the Sari High Command want us to do? If there was a chance the Ardat Yakshi could break loose, the commandos were to purge the monastery. Purge? You mean destroy? They would have brought heavy explosives with them, yes. Morinth was dangerous, but are the Ardat Yakshi this big of a threat? Morinth was just hitting her stride. Ardat Yakshi who kill leave behind astronomical body counts. It's why they can never be free, and why they're such a great source of shame to the Asari. That's why High Command won't rest until this place is destroyed. They'd never risk a single Ardat Yakshi getting loose. Okay, so it looks like we are dealing with a special place that houses the potentially dangerous Ardat Yakshi. But still, let's not start bombing the monastery right away and earn two Paragon points by insisting to find out more first. Don't assume anything. Maybe the Ardat Yakshi sent out the distress call. If the Asari want us to destroy this place, I need to know what happened. Agreed. Once we give a report to High Command, they'll stop wasting lives here. Dear Shepard, my visor's IR says this shuttle's warm. A recent visitor. Elevator disabled. To prevent entry or escape, I wonder. Alright, looks like we are not the only ones here, although it also seems like whoever's running things is not exactly keen on having visitors. That sound. There's more than one out there. What was that? Stay sharp. I heard something. That was me. Sorry. Right, so the lights are off and the situation is properly tense, still we want to take our time to look around the place for any loot and information that we can acquire. Talay, you won't believe what Yan has managed to smuggle in. A copy of Vanya. Meet us after supper in the library. Bring some study work. Reel is forewarden tonight, so act natural. We'll be by the East Video Banks. This is gonna be so great. See you there. Oh, and delete this once you listen to it. Not like last time. 
Now, in the context of the audio log we just listened to, this message from one of the matriarchs makes a lot more sense, as it essentially boils down to forbidding exactly what we just heard, students mingling and communicating with the outer world unsupervised. Basically, it appears as if the Asari in charge did everything they could to shelter the Ardak Yakshi, likely with the intent of keeping their murderous tendencies suppressed. This overly detailed daily schedule here is another indicator of a rigid regime that leaves little personal time, which makes seeing the facility in total disarray even more concerning. is out of the way. What do the Reapers want with Ardat Yakshi? Anything useful? A floor plan marked with the nav point location of a bomb. It's in some place called the Great Hall. At least it's no surprise Nuke gone to Chanka, but the commandos want this place gone pretty badly. And yes indeed, whatever is going on here seems to have caused a bit of a ruckus with the Asari. Still, blowing up the entire place might also be a bit overambitious, and pointing that out earns us two more Paragon points. Ardat Yakshi or not, evacuating this place would have saved a lot of lives. If there's no survivors, let's get to the Great Hall and set off that bomb. Now moving on, the door ahead of us here is blocked, so we need to quickly hop over to the one right next to it, which brings us into a larger corridor. From here we can take a brief look at the facility's snowy exterior, but otherwise there is nothing of interest here. So let's head straight for the door, which we can go through after a quick bypass. Very good. I almost didn't hear you. Samara! It has been some time, Shepard. You are a most welcome sight. The corruption here runs deep. What brings a Justicar out here? My daughters have lived here for centuries, Garrus. I've come for them. Unfortunately, the Reapers had already infested this place by the time I arrived. You met me hunting down your other Ardat Yakshi daughter. Are these ones just as dangerous? Faler and Rila have followed the monastery's rules ever since they arrived. They've shown no inclination toward violence. And you're here to save them? They are my responsibility. And it's one that cannot be abandoned, even as our galaxy crumbles. Alright, Samara is back. Formerly our companion in Mass Effect 2, her Ardat Yakshi daughters once again bring us together, and of course we'll help her look for them in exchange for two more Paragon points. Let's go together. Maybe your daughters can tell us why the Reapers hit this place. I suspect they will have much to tell us. It has been centuries since I last saw them. We're out of time. We'll meet again. I will draw these creatures off. Wait! Let's go. Okay, so it seems like Samara's daughters have been living here peacefully, unlike her other daughter, Morinth, who we met in Mass Effect 2. My name is Tashia Pori. I'm wounded. Bad. Give this to my bondmate, Weshra. Asked her to go to the Citadel and... Tell Weshra I love her. Tell her. Sorry we fought. I was an idiot. Didn't mean any of it, Weshra. Want... Want you to have everything of mine, okay? Love you. I love you so... <gasps> From May PDA, we can then recover a small mission for our next trip back to the Citadel, but for now, let's keep moving towards that Great Hall. It's too quiet. Are there any survivors? This fight didn't last long by the look of it. It wouldn't. The monastery only had a few guards to protect it, not an army. That one's new. 
Alright, meet the Banshee. Of course, the Reapers had something sinister in mind when they attacked this place, and the Banshee is the result of those ambitions. Sporting a tough barrier and strong armor, Banshees are very durable enemies, although their attacking capabilities are arguably even more dangerous. You just saw it, they can biotically jump multiple times over short distances, allowing them to close in extremely fast and making it hard to lay down continued fire. Should they get into melee range, they can kill you or your squad mates instantly, while from range they have access to a warp-like biotic power, which quickly depletes shields and even tracks its target. Now, as you can see, a single Banshee is still manageable, but multiple ones or those accompanied by other Reaper units can be deadly, even for a maxed out level 60 squad like ours. Now, we'll talk a bit more about Banshees in just a moment. For now, with this first one taken out, we have a small wave of cannibals left to deal with, which should obviously not pose a serious threat to us at this point. We can even use it to grab one more melee kill before we then collect some ammo and proceed. And yes indeed, the Banshees share some visual similarities with the Asari. Unfortunately though, we did not get a good look at this one before we disposed of it. As soon as I was able. Shepard, this is Faler, my youngest. She and her sister Rila are Ardat Yakshi. They have Mother, been... they have Rila. What? I saw some of those creatures take her into the Great Hall. I've been trying to get there. What are the Reapers doing here? Harvesting us. They're turning us into... into those... monsters. Please, you can't let that happen to Rila. The Asari thought the Ardat Yakshi were to blame for the attack. This is our home. Most of us are grateful to be here. The monastery is a place Ardat Yakshi can achieve peace. Valer speaks truthfully, Shepard. I vouch for her words with pride. Right, so by selecting the option on the left earlier, we also skipped our only chance to grab Paragon points in this conversation, but instead of simply going with the Renegade option now, let's believe her. So far, there is nothing indicating that the danger comes from anyone but the Reapers. Then we have to find Rila fast. The Great Hall has a bomb in it. A bomb? What, didn't you come to rescue people? We'll try, but we can't leave this place standing, Falaire. You sound like the Commandos. They didn't stop to help anyone. Faler. I'm sorry. Faler. The Great Hall. She's looking for Rila. We'll meet you there. Please be swift. Okay, so to the right is where we eventually want to go, so naturally we're going left first, although there really isn't anything of interest here except for a damaged elevator door. You'd need a crowbar to pry those doors open. This place was beautiful before the Reapers came. And yes, we can still see some of that beauty in the Asari architecture around us. Sadly though, it also looks like we'll be the only ones appreciating that for quite some time. Jathra, this is Galay. I've blocked extranet access. We don't need the students panicking about these Reaper rumors. Still, it will not hurt to tally our supplies. Please bring me an inventory before evening prayer. I'll contact Fessy later tonight to inquire what sent the Asari to war. Go in peace. Once again then, another indicator of the Matriarchs protecting the Ardat Yakshi. Although it of course begs the question how far you can reasonably go in that effort, and cutting off access to the entire extranet seems pretty damn drastic to me. Still, we have no time to worry about that, as there are more Reapers ahead of us, this time a group of cannibals as well as a single Marauder. 
Taking out the shields of the latter first is a good idea to make this fight a bit easier. Afterwards, then, we want to focus on the cannibals, who, as you can see, also get barriers from somewhere. Now, that somewhere is a small chamber just around the corner to the right here, where a barrier engine is placed on the wall right behind the entrance. A few shots are enough to destroy it and with that remove the barriers of all remaining enemies, which admittedly are not too many at this point. Following the fight, we can then find the Disable Shotgun on the ground, which is actually not a bad weapon, being pretty light and accurate, but we upgraded and brought the Spike Thrower for a reason, and without spoiling anything, that reason is still to come. So we'll take it, but not equip it, and then help ourselves to, I guess, neither the XP nor the Medigel from a medical station. After all, we're stocked full and have reached the level cap already. Now, very importantly, we do not want to go down these stairs just yet. Instead, we briefly want to head over to this room on the other side. Not only can we find a wall safe full of credits in here, but also another terminal. This one telling us of a matriarch showing their very own version of mercy towards a student by placing the girl into a holding chamber instead of outright executing her. So again, it seems like the Asari are taking this monastery pretty darn serious, even though, as we learned from the other message here, there are some bright spots, for example, the yearly supervised visits to the Asari homeworld of Thessia. Now, if we wanted to, or if we had picked up the Disciple earlier, we could now also use this weapons bench over here. But since we are good to go with our loadout, let's do exactly that, although perhaps not quite as far as one might expect. Now, as soon as we reach the bottom of the stairs here, the game drops an autosave, and that is our sign to retreat. You can hear it already, another Banshee has entered the area, and this time it is not alone. And remember how I said earlier that Banshees with company are a serious problem? Yes, this is already one of those cases. Still, thanks to the holy trifecta of warp, overload and energy drain, we can actually get rid of the Banshee's barrier quite quickly, which then only leaves us with the armor layer, and you know that we are quite well equipped to take those out. However, Banshees also have a unique shielding mechanic that they use once they take too much damage in a short period of time. You can see that when they raise their hand and their bluish shield starts shimmering around them. Talking strategy though, we can actually use that mechanic to our advantage, because during that shielding animation they remain standing still for a few seconds. So what I like to do is first empty the spike thrower's three round magazine into them, then immediately follow things up with a concussive shot to trigger a fire explosion, that in turn then triggers the Banshee's shielding animation, and that usually gives us enough time to reload and continue shooting. Apart from this, there is another good reason for bringing the spike thrower on this mission though, and that would be the fact that if a Banshee uses its biotic jump to quickly close the distance, it is extremely hard to hit. That means that we need to deal as much damage as possible during those split seconds where it stands still, so weapons that do a lot of damage with a single shot are preferred. Of course, sniper rifles perfectly fill that role, but they become increasingly useless the closer a Banshee gets, and, well, they really like to get close. The Spike Thrower, meanwhile, does have some good medium-range accuracy, which makes it one of my go-to weapons in missions where Banshees are the main enemies. The Talon Heavy Pistol, for example, would be another good choice in my opinion, but we have already used that on a previous mission, and I'd like to keep things interesting. So, we are now wrapping things up in this room here by taking out the last few cannibals, and this is where you can see the one true downside of the spike thrower, and that would be accuracy over longer ranges. So, simply standing still and firing away is not an option with this weapon, although with banshees in the area we should probably get used to moving around anyway. Now, at this point, the area is cleared, we can collect a bit of ammo and then proceed, everything else of value has already been grabbed. The next room here is then completely empty as well, except for two things. First, over on the left side here, we can find an assault rifle weapon upgrade, and then we can examine a dead Asari in the middle of the room. Another dead commando. Was she holding off Reapers or was she left behind? Commandos work as teams. She would have volunteered to guard this point. Hope she took some down before she died. And again, the fact that these Banshees seem to have no trouble killing multiple Asari commandos, that definitely indicates just how dangerous they are, and unfortunately, we have not seen the last of them. Taking the elevator into the next room, we are now about to locate the Great Hall, and as soon as we arrive, we want to take note of our surroundings. 
First of all, we want to spot the two medical stations on the pillars to the left and right here, not to mention the bomb further down the hall. There's our bomb. And Valer. Rila. Rila, wake up! Valer. Rila cannot hear us. Look! She's still alive! I know, but I am afraid Rila is not well. Rila's not one of them yet. She can't be. She just needs to wake up. Rila? Uh, Rila, can you hear me? Because they've begun to turn her into one of the Reaper's creatures. I'm sorry. Can we set off that bomb? Not without a detonator. Commandos would have had one. We've got to find it. Later. And yes, it all comes down to this, we are now fighting not one, but two Banshees at once, and to make matters even more interesting, they have also brought some husks with them. For the longest time, I actually always thought that there were three of them, probably because of all of that jumping around, which makes it really hard to keep track of them, but even with only two, this fight is among the tougher ones in the game. Now, strategy-wise, there are a couple of things that we want to keep track of here. First and foremost, of course, we do not want to get ourselves killed, and that means staying as far away from the Banshees as possible. Our depleted shields can quickly be replenished with an energy drain, that is, provided we can find a Banshee who still has their barrier up, and that barrier is actually something that we want to keep an eye on, because if we leave a Banshee alone for too long, that barrier will quickly replenish. And I don't think I have to mention that that is something that we want to avoid, so despite all of our evasive maneuvers, we definitely want to keep up the pressure, even if it means taking a few calculated risks. Our squad members, meanwhile, are unfortunately more or less used as distractions in this fight. The absolute last thing that we want is both Banshees and a few of the husks zoning in on us, and to that end we will gladly accept some squad-made casualties. The pretty substantial risk of someone going down during this fight is also why we did not pick up any Medigel beforehand, because if a Banshee takes someone down with their close range instant kill ability, then that squad member can only be revived by using Medigel and not simply by standing next to them. At this point, maybe a few more quick tips and tricks on the Banshees. They do actually have a weak spot, namely their head, so that would be another argument for the slower firing but more precise weapons in the game. Additionally, contrary to what it might look like, that shield that they sometimes put up does only negate powers, but not weapon damage. So if you can get it to trigger, that is a great way to make a Banshee stand still, ideally to land a few high damage headshots. Falaire, go! Take the elevator! Rila, what, what are you doing? It's too late for me. There are hundreds coming. Just go! Move! No! Rila! I love you. Rila! Slaves. Thank you. 
Gabriela, there wasn't even time to say goodbye. Few can break the Reaper's hold. Rila's will was extraordinary, as was her love for you. We left her to die. Rila made her choice, and it has reminded me of what is truly important. Why I swore I'd lay down my life. What is that? Valer. The code demands an Ardat Yakshi cannot live outside a monastery that no longer exists. What are you doing? I'm sorry, Shepard. By the Justicar's code, there is only one way to save Valer. Mother, no! My daughters, you were all so much stronger than I believe. Let go. What are you doing? Fulfilling the code. By throwing your life away? I won't kill my last daughter. You won't have to. Valer? I'll stay here. Home. No matter what's become of it. Without a proper monastery, I could have left any time. I don't need a building to honor my own code. And if the Reapers return, they won't take me alive, I promise. Then, the code permits you to stay, as you are. Once this war is over, and if I am able, I will visit, as a Justicar should. And so here we are, after a Paragon interrupt to save Samara's life and to earn 15 Paragon points, we have one more Paragon choice to make, and that is to suggest that Samara stays with her daughter, even though we could of course use her for the war effort. I'd understand if you wanted to help Falaire rebuild a home here. It must wait now that I can help oppose the Reapers. I'll speak with Falaire, then join your forces. If you'll have me, of course. I'd be honored. The honor is mine, my friend. Everything's taken care of down here. Bring in the shuttle. Right, Commander. I'll just follow the smoke. I read your report, Commander. We had no idea the situation had deteriorated so quickly. That's why I set off the bomb. There were no Arda Yakshi left. May the Ardat Yakshi find rest. What the Reapers did to them was monstrous. I had another team of commandos headed to the monastery who I can now formally transfer to Admiral Hackett's command. They'll serve you loyally, Commander. Farewell. All right, so there we are, achievement unlocked, and we have received two additional war assets. First, the aforementioned team of Asari commandos, and then of course, Samara herself. Still, for the time being, I think we'll spare ourselves from having to go through the entirety of the new war assets at the war terminal. Instead, let's wrap things up with another brief tour through the Normandy. Unread messages at your private terminal, Commander. The Crucible Project received some new tech from the Asari government. I'm glad they've decided to help the war effort. Everybody has to fight now, no matter how pretty you are. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. And yes indeed, the Asari seem to be increasingly supportive, now that they have the Reapers breathing down their necks too, and we will actually start that part of the plotline very soon. For now though, a quick visit to the cockpit shall suffice. Glad you talked Samara down. I never thought I'd see her flinch from her duty. I don't know. On one hand, that code's all she's had to live by for, god, centuries. And the galaxy goes to hell, the old rules don't cut it anymore. I mean, we're cutting some corners, right? A few. Well, the Alliance can always court-martial us after we save the galaxy. What are you doing, Edie? Monitoring reports of proton storms and other space weather. With the Reapers attacking the comm buoy systems, critical warnings may be lost. How bad are these storms? If we are warned, not bad. If we are not warned, very bad. Thanks for the info, Edie. Alright, looks like everyone is up to the usual around here, which means we can now head back to our private terminal. After all, Trainer just mentioned that we have received a new message. 
And in fact, we have not one but two messages waiting for us, and they both relate to the mission that we just completed. The first one here is just another confirmation that we now have a squad of Asari commandos at our disposal, while the other one comes from Samara, who briefly explains why she cannot join us here on the Normandy, and then also mentions that before heading for the front lines, she is going back to the Citadel, so during our next visit we might want to look out for her. And actually, let us jump back into the galaxy map now, although not to go back to the Citadel just yet. Instead, we quickly want to complete our scanning tour of the Nimbus cluster, because there is one more point of interest in here that we should visit before we head down to the crew deck. I found something. And that point of interest can be found here on the planet Trategos, a more or less frozen planet, but nonetheless still home to an Asari colony. Now, unfortunately, this planet is under Reaper attack as well, but that won't stop us from scanning here, which then reveals a valuable piece of intel, namely an intact Reaper weapon. And if you remember, we picked up another piece of intel in that very first room of the monastery just a few moments ago, the one where we still had to use our flashlight. So that makes it too that we can turn in at Liara's office now, and we are also more or less done with scanning here, as the rest of the system only holds an absolute abundance of fuel. Still, let us already set course to our next destination, which will be the Citadel. Evasion successful. Like I said earlier, pretty much all remaining missions start here in some form or fashion. For now though, we won't dock just yet and instead head down to the crew deck, where we can find Caden in a somewhat somber mood in the starboard observatory. was a rough mission. The Reapers are an ingenious and ruthless enemy. Poor Rila. Ingenious and ruthless. The worst kind. <sighs> Never met a real Ardot Yakshi. Not that I know of, anyway. I think I dodged a bullet there. Seriously, I think I would have been a goner. With that being said, the arguably more interesting conversation happens on the other side of the ship, where we can find two of our favorites exchanging stories. Everybody was fighting the Rachni, trying to push them back through the relay. Finally, the Krogan were turned loose and stopped them. I see. But when the Krogan rebelled, we had to deploy the Genophage to stop them. Wasn't the only rebellion. A thousand years later, the Geth revolted against the Quarians. That was a whole other war. Then along came the humans. My own people tangled with them for a while, and now, to top it all off, we've got the Reapers. What about you? The Ouroboros fought the Densorin. The Andoromai conquered the Vanduma, and the Jatil turned against the Jah. So, I guess nobody really ever gets their act together. The Sinriel claimed to have found the path to eternal peace. What happened? The Ditika preferred war and wiped them out. I hope you guys had alcohol. Some of the crew seem shocked by the monstrosities we have encountered. They haven't seen what the Reapers could corrupt after a hundred years. That was our war. Every battle conjured a new nightmare. This human holds such childish views of war. Your species has much to learn. Commander. Samara's the kind of soldier we need in this war. Nothing gets in her way. I just hope I'm not in her way someday. That woman means business. Now it's a mutated Asari. The Reapers are just a giant nightmare factory that never ends. I can only imagine what the Reapers are doing to the Drell. Or the Hanar. Or the Vorcha. This could get a lot worse before it gets better. It's a brilliant tactic, when you think about it. But it's evil. When has that ever mattered and more? Yeah, but converting other life forms into Reapers? I can't wrap my head around that. Makes sense to me. It ensures you never run out of cannon fodder, eliminates any local resistance, and for every soldier you add, your enemy loses too, the one you converted, and his buddy on the other side who can't pull the trigger on a friend. You sound like you admire them. Same way I admire a virus or a thresher maw. They've adapted perfectly to their situation. But the Reapers want to destroy us. 
and I have no intention of letting them. But if you don't respect your enemy's capabilities, you're in for one nasty surprise after another. And with Garrus making a very good point here, let us now invest in some of our own capabilities, as we can now grab two unique bonuses from the intel terminal in Liara's office. Excellent find, Commander. The information network terminal has been updated. First, let us take care of the intact Reaper weapon that we just picked up. The intel from this specifically seems to come from the miniaturized energy cells powering the gun's systems. As a result, we can use it to either grab ourselves an increase to weapon damage or to ammo capacity. And I think this is an easy one. Ammo capacity is usually not a problem for most weapons, while the damage bonus benefits every single gun out there. So that is the one that we are going with. Up next then, we picked up the electronic signature of Matriarch Gale, and being a matriarch, this signature should open some doors. Specifically, we could use it to obtain a store discount bonus, or, and that is what we're going to do because money is not going to be a problem once we get to the Citadel DLC, we can use it to improve the damage of our powers. So here we are, both weapons and powers have become a bit more powerful, time to continue. Poor Rila, but I'm glad she set off that bomb, Shepard. You're not upset the monastery was destroyed? No, not after what I saw. I don't care that they were Ardat Yakshi. To be turned into such creatures, nobody deserves that. And of course, being an Asari herself, it is understandable that Liara is particularly concerned about what we just witnessed, and the fact that she actively took part in the mission adds a bit more weight to these lines here, which is, again, why I consider her a no-brainer for this mission. on the Asari, who were turned into Reaper creatures. The Ardat Yakshi? No. I think that story would be perfect for you. The hidden dark side of the most beautiful race in the galaxy. We have a huge Asari audience. If I do that story, I could lose them. That seems a bit like pandering. Ever seen how fast an e-democracy can abandon its allies? No. If I do my job, you won't. Interesting conversation then happening here between Alice and Trainer. I would have loved if we could have explored that a bit further, but we can't, so let's head over to engineering. Okay, toughest mission. Horizon. No fair, I hadn't joined up with you yet. Fine, the Dead Reaper then. Really? The husks just ran up to us. Have you ever noticed that I carry a sniper rifle and you're the one who likes things at short range? And you prefer to keep everything at a distance. From husks? Absolutely. Creepiest thing we fought? The Thorian. Your turn. I'm going with the Rachni. The Queen? But we didn't fight her uh, either time. No, the little ones. They look like spiders and they scuttle right toward you. I thought you liked it when things got up close and personal. Not when it's spiders. One more instance then of Garrus and Liara catching up, and we can also see Daniels and Donnelly have made it back to their stations, and we are almost done for today as well. The only thing left to do is one last visit down to the shuttle bay. The next time you blow up a monastery, let me know you've left the premises, okay? I worry about you. And once again, it is Cortez reminding us that he does play a pretty important part during all of these missions, and I feel like his services are sometimes not adequately recognized. Still, we have reached the end of today's episode, and the reason we completed this mission at this point is very simple. With the Banshees, it introduces a new enemy, and you can probably imagine that this was not the last we saw of them. So before we tackle any other missions that may or may not feature Banshees as well, I think playing through the Monastery first is mandatory, simply because it is meant to be their introductory mission and their first appearance. Next time then, we are going to do some more business on the Citadel, but I'm not going to tell you what just yet. We do have quite a few options to choose from though. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.